Hey there, I'm Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys Podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. He says, yeah. I am a freak, and if you saw me, you'd faint, you'd be turned into stone or a pillar of salt. There's some kind of <laughs> evil <laughs> fish <laughs> mastermind. It's like at the ending no. of God's Not Dead, where like, he sends <laughs> out the message to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, this week, Avatar The Way of Water came out. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if you, How was that? The great Avatar uh, I have too. not bothered watching it because I know that it's just going to pale in comparison to Black Adam, the cinematic masterpiece. Oh, you are correct. That's true. <laughs> of course. So, I always kind of get confused when watching the original Avatar because I've seen that one. I'm like, okay, so why are we getting all interested in, like, this fictitious planet with all these, like, aliens on it when we could be caring about our planet? So the fish in Berlin, I guess, had the same idea that I had. I was like, so we're paying all this money <laughs> the to watch a movie in overseas. Yeah, so they, uh, the fish tank in the Berlin Aquarium, I guess, burst. <laughs> and <laughs> Wait, went, what? Weird. Yeah, it burst. <laughs> And it left, Hold like, on. 1,500 fish it's not, all over the street. It's not good. Wait. It's a huge what? fish tank. Oh, they wanted no. to show us the, um, the this... real way of water. Is <laughs> this is the true way of water. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I was going to ask, Gosh. how are you transitioning Avatar way of the water into this? Like, I get the water, but, like, what else <laughs> what? connected that? that was... I don't want to laugh at this because this is millions of dollars literally down the drain as well <laughs> as well as. <laughs> okay, that shouldn't have made me laugh as hard as it just did. I had like the shotgun laugh. <laughs> no, like really, I feel bad about this. You talk really about do. flushing money down the toilet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting too deep with these, man. <laughs> Guys, we're in over our head. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these oh jokes gosh. are flopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really, wait, I can't, let, let I just... can't laugh at this. Like I just did for like thirty seconds, but like, <laughs> no, I get what you mean. Let, let's circle back here. So, is this just a random aquarium? Like what? So it's the Berlin Aquarium. You... It's like it's a big. Aquarium. The Berlin Aquarium sounds important. What? What is it's that? Big aquarium. Big fish How tank. Big the, are we talking? the fish tank had an elevator in the middle of it that would Ooh. take you through it. It was a very elaborate tank. Yeah, it says an 82-foot aquarium housing 1,500 fish. Big tank. Yeah, okay, so imagine, we'll put a picture up on screen for those of you watching on YouTube, but it's this massive cylinder, basically. Yeah, in the middle of the room. Oh, it wasn't the aquarium. It was in a hotel. Oh, is this not in the Berlin Aquarium? Yeah, it's it's the hotel aquarium. I didn't even know that. I thought oh. it was like in their actual aquarium. Berlin's traffic agency, according to Newsweek, reported a quote unquote extremely large volume of water spilling into the street. <laughs> that that would that would do it. People are thinking that it got too <clears throat> cold outside and that resulted in some of something freezing overnight. And then something could have, like, cracked, which led to pressure getting all goofy, and then it just burst. That's what people think happened, but it's not really sure. It That kind of sucks. Yeah, we don't really Man. know what caused it. Yeah, it looks like they, they really aren't sure what the cause is. Although, <laughs> apparently, uh, in the age we're now in, where you can buy verification on Twitter, some uh, fake yes. account uh, <laughs> impersonating the police went and, like, started a bounty hunt for the people that <laughs> supposedly <laughs> broke the aquarium. Uh, and so Twitter had to take those down. No. What if this was a targeted attack? Like, what if there was a conspiracy? But if there was, like, what would the motive it, be to blow they're up They're saying this that there aquarium? is zero reason to believe that it was a targeted attack and that it basically definitely wasn't. But I like to think, if it was, <laughs> is there, like, a fish hitman out there? Is there, like, the fish mafia? <laughs> and they're like, we gotta take him out. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> we gotta... That's incredible. It's... Yeah, the fish are behind it. Was this like an act of fish terrorism? Yes. It's like, just, it's just the, is that what this was? The fish <laughs> Taliban. <laughs> Man, this, uh, why did, I was thinking like, I don't know, fish rights activist, but instead of like imagining humans behind the <laughs> scenario, you went to the fish. Like the, okay. there's some kind of evil <laughs> fish, fish mastermind. <laughs> That you had to take them out, man. And, like created a bomb. <laughs> Those fish knew too much, man. They... 
We need to call in. Oh, what's her name? Lady Wonder, the psychic horse. To yes, she got to analyze the situation. She could easily crack the scene instantly. Well, fellas, uh, I still fail to see how that had anything to do with Avatar. <laughs> hey, Avatar Water. Two. <laughs> that being said, um, Avatar Two: The Way of Water. I haven't seen it, and I don't plan to. It's not really flopping, but it's severely underperforming. You know what is flopping? <laughs> Some fish in Berlin. <laughs> 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 Man, this is terrible. All right, so there's this so-called religion in Japan. A lot of people think that they're a cult. They, of course, swear no. that they're not a cult. As all cults do. The Panawave Laboratory is a Japanese new religious group. They were founded by a woman in 1977 and combines elements of Christianity, Buddhism, and New Age doctrines. They wouldn't have really attracted that much attention from other groups that have strange beliefs, except for they have an obsession. And to call it an obsession is an understatement. With <laughs> electromagnetic waves, um, hence the name Panawave. And they are known for blaming every single environmental or catastrophe on electromagnetic waves. They dress in only white and they have vans that they like outfit with this like electromagnetic wave deflectors supposedly that will like get rid of it. So like if the world ever collapses, they'll like live free of the waves. So they were a thing in the mid 90s, but they kind of picked up in 2003 when they went a little too wild, a harp seal showed up in the Tama River in Tokyo. At first, it was like it was kind of weird because it was an Arctic seal. Like the people didn't really see like why it would get that far south. But it became a celebrity. The seal was still alive, and um, I guess they put it in like an aquarium or whatever. But then March of two thousand three. Pana Wave had been preaching for several years that the seal had turned up in the to- the river because of the electromagnetic waves, of course. That was what had confused it. Yeah, they believed that the waves, like, brainwashed the seal and made it swim <laughs> down yes, to it Tokyo. Just, like, it hit, like, full-blown, like, winter soldier mode and was just, like, it was just swimming <laughs> around, <laughs> along the Arctic. I must go to Japan. And, yeah, it was just, like, <laughs> Japan. And then just, like, just mindlessly just swam straight to Japan. Wait, wait, they believe that by returning the seal to Arctic waters, doomsday would be averted. <laughs> That's how they, oh, no. they viewed this seal as like a world-ending event. It, it looks like Panawave then tried to capture the seal. They attempted and failed to capture Tamashan. <laughs> so Tamashan is the name of the seal, just yeah. for the, the viewers wondering. I'm seeing that Panawave apparently tried to capture him using fishing nets. Oh. And they they got the fishing nets on him, and the seal slipped through. The seal outsmarted Pana Wave, but it became a big deal that um they tried to pass laws and stuff to protect him because like they were worried that other people might try the same thing. I don't really know why people would have tried the same thing because like Pana Wave looks so stupid doing this. Well, the reason Pana Wave wanted to bring him back was. Like, they legitimately believed that putting him back in the Arctic or, like, I don't know, removing the electromagnetic waves from him would save the world. And I don't know why. And even Wikipedia and other articles that I've found on it don't elaborate on the details. Like, nobody really gets what Panawave's thinking was. I mean, I'm not sure there was a whole lot of thinking. So No, um, there obviously wasn't. They also believed that an undiscovered 10th planet we're, we're just skipping cool. planet nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to no, skip they, the nine. Hey, Matthew, Pluto was still a planet at this point. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah. So, Pluto, yeah, was, yeah. Pluto hadn't been revoked yet. When was yeah, Pluto, no, it, like, it didn't know, lose its status. the early 2000s. Okay. So this was 2003. So I guess okay. this was before that. They thought planet X was going to swoop in and all of a sudden we'd be like, <gasps> a 10th planet. And it would just <gasps> flip the Earth's magnetic poles and rip the planet apart like 2012. On <laughs> on May 15th. On May 15th. I want to say that, yeah, on May 15th, when they believed this planet would screw over the Earth's magnetic poles, they were, like, really, really hyped about this. They're like, oh, yeah, it's going to go. And um, this may come as a shock to the listeners at home, but uh, it didn't happen. They, it seemed, were no. wrong. And they announced that they had miscalculated the date. And um, as if 
you know, this was really going to save their little shtick they had going on. They bumped the date back to May 22nd. So a week later, <laughs> and then after a no, week, oh, oh, next Tuesday, yeah, okay. next Tuesday, yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, we got it wrong, guys. Whoopsie Daisy. So they bumped it back, and um, shockingly enough, it happened. Planet <laughs> the world ended. Blasted. We are orbit. in oh, an alternate I universe. That <laughs> I you know the end of happening. JoJo's Part Six. <laughs> <laughs> Does the so Earth I blow will... up in the end of JoJo's? <laughs> so Some the... whack stuff happens at the end of JoJo's. <laughs> Actually, Matthew, they were right about this earthquake on May 15th. On May 15th, yeah, I'm seeing that. They didn't predict an earthquake. They predicted a planet swerving <laughs> by Earth. Hey, but the planet was going to okay, cause but... an earthquake. And whether or not the planet was there or not, an earthquake still happened. And, uh... It was devastating, should I oh. say. Um, this earthquake it ravaged happened Tokyo. In Tokyo, and one boy <laughs> fell off his bed and broke his and arm. Broke his arm. <laughs> oh no! Imagine living your life knowing that you are the doomsday of Pana Wave. Like that kid represents. <laughs> yeah. He's like Surtur from Thor Ragnarok. He is the chosen <laughs> one. Like... He is the prophet. <laughs> he he really was. Is. Dude. I like to think that the undiscovered 10th planet really did go by and it like just caused enough gravity to rip the kid out of his bed and throw him on the ground <laughs> and then yeah, it just, flew away. Just him <laughs> and just in Tokyo. Yeah. It was just we do enough. a little trolling. <laughs> like to think this planet was just like super malevolent and just targeted <laughs> just this like, one kid. Like, <laughs> you. This is about to go wild. <laughs> <That> Guys, <laughs> watch this. That kid was a Pana Wave doubter. He <laughs> doubted them. He, and the doubted planet them. Hated he them. was. <laughs> they evidently felt really goofy because mysteriously, after this, Nothing else happened to Pana Wave except for their leader dying three years later. Well, how do you recover from that? How do you recover from such a claim as, like, the end of the world is going to happen on May 15th? Doesn't happen. Oh, oh uh, yeah. okay. The he said next Tuesday, and I thought he meant that Tuesday, but he meant, like, the one after the next Tuesday. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> there it is. And then it doesn't happen again. Like, there's no coming back like, from that. Anything you say after that is just considered incredible. Fellas, I can confidently say Pana Wave is a load of baloney. Yeah. It, there is. Yeah. <laughs> there is there's no reason for this. I get, yeah, there was just an offshoot of this other call and they started to dress only in white in the mid 1990s in a belief that it would protect them from the electromagnetic waves which they claimed were being used against them by communists to try to kill their mm. leader. So the communists mm. were out there with like the Tesla death ray only it <laughs> shot like text messages at you and tried to kill you. <laughs> If the communists really were controlling, like, electromagnetic waves, why would they corrupt the brain of a seal? I love the idea that the seal was a bomb. And so they, like, <laughs> they lured him into a populated place. Like the, the Trojan horse. The seal was horse. not a seal, Jesse. It was a spy seal. <laughs> Dude, oh, the communist Trojan seal. Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> the seal just like hops up on land and it's like a mechanical seal submarine and a bunch of like communists run out. <laughs> what if the seal had an iPhone and it was going to text everybody? They were trying to stop it. It's like at the ending of no. God's Not Dead where like he sends out the message to everyone. <laughs> Did you just make a God's Not Dead reference? Dude. Yes, I did. What, <laughs> what do you mean? You know, like, movie. you know how like the, the one guy gets mad and like he like he's no no the- no you just made a god's not dead <laughs> reference jackson <laughs> no 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 made- let's let's hear him out let's let him <laughs> explain to me the you know the how like reference. there's that one that one like atheist guy who's like really rich and just like bullies the old woman the evil like, atheist and, like, the, like yeah the evil atheist but he like bullies the old woman who's a christian well, right at the end of the movie, when he gets to Texas, says God's not dead. He gets mad and he throws his phone into the nearby sea and then speeds off in its sports car. Oh, and then he gets like, <laughs> oh, hit yeah. by a car and dies. No, that's the other guy. No, that's, that's the this, first this one. Is after that, the seal just texts God's not dead, and all the atheists <laughs> on Earth just go into a conniption fit. <laughs> so all the atheists <laughs> just like start crying. <laughs> In the 1930s, 
on an island between Ireland and England. Several residents, namely the Irving family, who lived in a hamlet called Dalby, reported a talking mongoose, a psychic mongoose, perhaps a ghost, a spirit even. Oh. And he attracted a lot of attention at the time, but you've probably never heard of him, which is why we're talking about him. Yeah. In September of 1931, the Irving family, consisting of James Margaret and their 13-year-old daughter named Voiry, I think that's how you say her name. It's V-O-I-R-E-Y. I think, so it's it, yeah, I think it's like Voiry or it's a little while. I'll say Voiry. Voiry claimed that she heard persistent scratching and rustling and, and a little voice even behind their farmhouse's wooden wall panels. Run. Don't go up to it. This is how horror Spits films so start. Funny, yeah. yeah, get get out of there. That's that's how disaster begins. But she didn't because horror movies weren't really around at this point. It was the thirties. Yeah, you know, know, they were just getting started. She didn't know. Oh, okay. So I guess I'll give her. A, I'll cut her a break there then. But this ferret popped out to her one day and just introduced itself as Jeff. And I think it introduced itself to the whole family. And yeah, it was just this mongoose, this random mongoose. And he's like, sup, I'm Jeff. And he allegedly talked to them and walked around. He communicated to them that he was an extra, extra clever mongoose. He was an <laughs> earthbound spirit. <laughs> he was a ghost in the form of a mongoose. He says, yeah. I am a freak. I have hands and I have feet. And if you saw me, you'd faint. You'd be petrified, mummified, turned into stone or a pillar of salt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't that how Lot's wife died in the Bible? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like if you're gonna come up with a story about a talking mongoose, I mean, and and shame on oh, me okay, for even no, thinking says, that this was fake. He says a lot here. He says petrified, mummified, turned into stone. Or a pillar of salt. Okay. And seeing yeah, as we know. already know, if that can happen once, we don't know the supernatural implications of being a spirit trapped in the form of a mongoose. That is that, fair. That actually makes it more believable that it would happen twice. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Either way, whether Jeff was like a ghost, a spirit, an angel, or just an extra, extra clever mongoose, he basically became a pet of the Irving family, and they claimed that he supposedly guarded their house and informed them of the approach of guests or any unfamiliar dog. He would put out the fire at night. He would go down and stop the stove if it was left on. They claimed that he would wake people up when they overslept, and whenever mice got into the house, he would assume the role of a cat and take them out. They gave Jeff biscuits, chocolates, bananas, and food was left for him in a saucer suspended from the ceiling, which he took when he thought no one was watching. So he was he was a clever oh. mongoose, and he was uh, just part of the family. What a guy. Yeah. I really, like, I get that this, you know, this is a little sketchy, right? I get this is a little dodgy. But I like to believe this is real, because this is technically a ghost story, you could say that. But there's nothing bad here. There's nothing harmful about this, and honestly, it sounds really chill to just have a talking mongoose in your house with you. Like, I wish yeah. that we had pets that could just talk and chill like people. Yeah, that's what Jeff was. He just talked and he hung out, and he yeah, said he some, some spooky things about being a freak with hands and feet, and that if you saw his true form, you'd be turned into stone. But yeah, that know, besides is, that... I like to think that he was usually totally normal and then randomly said that one time. They're like, uh, Jeff, you good? And then he just went back to being Jeff again. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, but think about this, though. Jeff. <laughs> he still is pretty nice because he's still just inhabiting the body of a mongoose. He doesn't want to turn people into stone. So he's actually some, like... Lovecraftian abomination. He's some horror he beyond could comprehension. Be. But he's just in the body of a mongoose. Yeah, maybe he's like Nyarlathotep and he just wanders <laughs> the world of man. So after the death of James Irving, so the father of the family, his wife Margaret and Voiry, the girl that originally, you know, found Jeff, they moved out of the home. Uh, they reportedly had to sell the farm at a loss because of the reputation it had of being haunted, understandably. And then... Tragedy. In 1946, Leslie Graham, who had bought their farm, the little, little dirtbag here, claimed to the press that he had shot and killed Jeff. He was like the angry, mean hunter from a Disney movie. Oh, and, wow. uh, no, what a sicko. Apparently there was hope yet because uh, the body apparently was black and white rather than yellow and much larger. And Voiry was very certain that was not Jeff. Oh, uh, phew. Was a Apparently call. she died in 2005 and maintained up until then that Jeff was not fake. She insisted her entire Did life. Did other people see Jeff? Apparently the whole family knew Jeff, and apparently the entire town thought that their house was haunted because of him, and they it resulted in them selling the farm at a loss. 
So the story of Jeff was popular in town where they lived, and many journalists flocked to the aisle to try to catch a glimpse of Jeff. Several other people, both local and visitors, they all said that they heard Jeff's voice and two claimed to have seen him, but the physical evidence is lacking. Uh, Footprints, stains on the wall, and hair samples claimed to be evidence of Jeff. However, they could be belonging to the Irving sheepdog. No, it was Jeff. So, Have they ever done a DNA test on this? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, it does say that hair samples claimed to be evidence of Jeff were identified as belonging to the sheepdog. So I, some of them at least were, as would be expected, at least as I would expect, from such a clever, extra clever mongoose. He covered his tracks well. Well, he may have cleared away his physical evidence, but uh, that's when the psychic investigators came in. Oh. You know, they did come in and they did look around because this is a cool story and they wanted to see what was going on there. And it doesn't look like they were super satisfied with what they found, concluding that only the most credulous of individuals would be impressed with the evidence for Jeff. This makes me sad. He's real. Yeah, no, I think he's real. Jeff is real. I want to think, like, why would they lie about it? That's the thing. What do you have to gain? Well, the thing is, yeah, after they lied about it, their house lost value. Like, they lost money from this and probably respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they had to have. And if it was just, like, a prank perpetuated by, like, the dad, their dad passed away. So in that case, the wife, Margaret, would have to be the one perpetuating the hoax. Because I'm imagining a scenario where maybe, like, one of the parents, they'd make up this goofy animal that's in the house, and they they do the voices, and it's, like, ventriloquism, and they're just playing a prank on their daughter. But that, I, I don't know that that makes sense, because dad passes away. Then they have to move from their house and sell it at a loss because of this prank you're playing on your daughter. She's also 13 when this starts, and it was 1945 when James died. A lot of the skeptics think that it was the daughter that was doing it, actually, because she claims to have met him in the first place. Uh, And a lot of skeptics claim that she used ventriloquism. And that could be the only evidence we have really against that is just that she claimed up until 2005 that nope jeff was real as i usually say on this podcast um these sorts of articles are real until proven fake so as far as i see it jeff was real i wonder why a mongoose yeah why not like a crab (laughs) yeah i mean come on you could have like snuck up on the family and pinched them yeah i believe though mongooses are from India, though, they're not from the Isle of Man at all. Didn't he have some kind of origin story about coming from India, about being some some ghost? Yeah. Oh, it's got to be somewhere here on the wiki. Jeff introduced himself and told them he was a mongoose born in New Delhi, India, in 1852. Man, that's neat. So he knew what year he was born in. And by the way, uh, just to give you an idea of what that implication was, this happened in September of 1931. So that would have already made him what like 81 years old or 79 years old yeah um yeah but mongoose has only lived to around 10 years in the wild no jeff was a ghost inhabiting a mongoose but he said he was born he was born as a human in 1852 in india died re-inhabited a mongoose and then managed to somehow make his way to the isle of man that was just all he could get. What did he have to do to be reincarnated as a mongoose? Well, I still think the weird thing is really just the fact that he like somehow got from India to an island between England and Ireland. I don't really know how he would have done that. I know that England did own India at the time, and there were ships that did go to India. So he commandeered not... a vessel. <laughs> He, I guess he, I guess he stole did. a ship and, uh, <laughs> I guess... and sailed to the Isle of Man. <laughs> Just to go harass this family on a farm. Google has the audacity to say that Jeff is a fictional creature. That's wrong. That's he's not. That's taking it too all. far. You have yet to prove that he's fictional. We know that he's real. He it even says that he got extensive coverage by tabloid sites. Okay, like, <laughs> like come on. <laughs> he has to be real. Look, they even made Lemon Demon made a song about him in Spirit Phone. Lemon like, that's Demon. How, that's how real it is. 
Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, which we encourage you to share with your friends so we can grow the podcast. And drop a comment down below if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.